The following tutorial is brought to you by WholeLoops.com. It's production time. I'm Reed Stefan, realist puppet in the game. Today, I'm sharing five tricks in Ableton that are hidden in plain sight. What I'm talking about are features that are extremely useful shortcuts that you may not have noticed as a beginner, intermediate, or even an advanced user. And truth be told, some of these I didn't even find out until just recently, and I've been using Ableton for over a decade. So let's jump right into the list. The first feature that absolutely blew my mind when I figured out about this just a couple of years ago, the ultimate trick that will save you during the arrangement phase of your project is right here next to the automation button itself, and that's automation lock. And that means no matter what you do with your clips, MIDI clips, audio clips, all your automation will remain untouched. Extremely useful, especially for the arrangement phase. The next shortcut I am a massive fan of is dragging in sessions and stems, whatever it is, from old songs. All you have to do is click Add Folder and pick whatever folder you keep your Ableton sessions in. And I could just start out by pulling some dance hall drums out of an old project that I did. For example, my How to Make a Dance Hall Beat tutorial. I'll put a link to that in the description but you can drag the individual channels in or even just take the whole group so that visually you see what came from the old song and what belongs in the new song because it's all here with the same color that I had it in and it snaps to your tempo. Let's take a listen. Hey. That's obviously not how visual starts, but a great example of how quickly and easily it is to combine a vibe from some other song into your new song. Ableton literally does it for you. Let's say while you were working on this song, you were just kind of jamming out on your piano. And you decided that you actually played something that you liked, but you weren't recording. And you're not sure how to play it again. Uh, Ableton is secretly always recording your MIDI in the background with this little square button right here. If you've watched my tutorials before, you see me use this all the time, but this is an absolute game changer for people who are trying to start songs quickly and a very easy feature to get overlooked. In fact, some of the neighboring features are also extremely useful. For example, if I wanted to play more piano on top of this piano, I could hit the plus button and when I record, my new piano and is now layered on top of my old piano performance. And also, if you don't want to do anything but record yourself turning knobs, you can disarm all your channels for recording and still hit record and go grab something on here. And now you're recording automation. See, there's us squiggling the line back and forth. So aside from the pre-recording, you also have some other very handy features up here that I encourage you to incorporate into your workflow. Does your master chain sound a little weak sauce? Do your tracks lack organic flavor and quality? Maybe you're just missing the sauce. Introducing Master Sauce, our organic blend of Ableton effects that'll get your masters so crispy you might never use another plug-in chain again. Master Sauce is available now only at wholeloops.com. The fourth feature is another thing that I actually found out pretty recently, and that is the purpose of this second volume thing right here. My whole life, I would have my song playing, and I'd be sitting here hitting this thing, wondering, what does this thing even do? until I found out that this controls the volume of all of the system audio. If you consider this the project audio and then you browsing samples or the click track playing up here, system audio, you now have an independent volume for your click track. The other thing that I really use this for is when I'm tracking vocals. It's so easy to ruin your vocal recordings because the click track is usually the main offender in headphone bleed. 
The fifth and most epic Ableton trick of them all involves a few of the stock plugins. Not all of them, but about four of them actually have an option right there to just make the sound higher quality, just straight up make them sound better. And two of those plugins are EQ8 and glue compressor. And all you have to do to make both these plugins sound better is right click on it and enable oversampling. And same thing here with the glue compressor, oversampling. Let's play the uh, hook of this song and turn off and on oversampling so you can hear the difference. That's off. Did you hear the difference when I turned it on and off? Because I definitely heard a big difference in the width and clarity of the entire mix. Now using these on your individual channels won't make so profound of a difference, but for you guys to hear what this actually does in the tutorial, I figured I'd show you how these work on the master chain. The other two stock Ableton plugins that actually have an option right off the bat for a higher quality sound is the dynamic tube, Boom, high quality. On some of the plugins that have that high quality option, it's already enabled. And also Reverb, by default, is on Eco. And again, if your CPU can handle it, switch it to high and see what you think. Well, there you have it. That concludes my five Ableton hacks that are hidden in plain sight. I hope you found the tips and tricks in this tutorial useful. And if there's something you'd like to see me cover, feel free to leave it in a comment below. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time with another tutorial. Peace out.